in, in Isaiah, I saw a very, very interesting passage in Isaiah, uh, chapter 61 it is. And it's something that would be under the radar except that God would just in and just instantly open your vision to something that you have not seen. In Isaiah 61, we generally deal with the first three verses and we associate it to the book of Luke where Jesus opens in the temple. But if you notice verse 4, they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Now, that's not good. But I'm going to return, I'm going to turn some things. And ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Look at somebody like you got a word from the Lord and tell them double for your trouble. Amen. Touch somebody else and say double time. Amen. It's double time. The book of Isaiah theologically is not easy to place chronologically because it would seem as if the book is post-exilic and not pre-exilic. By that I simply mean Israel is going into exile and the writing of Isaiah is not after exile, but it is written before exile. And it's difficult to assess the presentation of Isaiah because one would think that they had already been in exile and the word of the Lord is coming to them to encourage them psychologically to grasp the next move of God. It seems as if most of us generally looking for encouragement while we're in the middle of something or after we've come through something and we're trying to assess the psychological and the spiritual damage and the emotional distortion that we have and we are just gratefully looking for somebody to help us to recover ourselves after we have been through something. But this book of Isaiah is reaching out to Israel both with judgments and promises before they go into exile. As if God is saying to them in a sort of double way, I'm giving you judgment and I'm giving you promises. I'm promising you judgment and I'm promising you restoration before you ever get into the circumstance or situation. Ah, I'm beginning to wonder just how powerful that is. Maybe because oftentimes when God makes those kinds of presentations, we don't listen. Uh, remember, Jesus said to Peter, he said, now you are going to deny me. 
and he told him that and he said but after you are converted I want you to strengthen the brethren well it would seem to me that he's giving him a statement of fact and he's telling him that you're going to do something yes you braggadocious person before the cock crows thrice uh, you twice you're going to deny me thrice but what he does is with his prescience with his with his ability to forecast with his knowledge of the future he speaks to Israel about the chastening but he also includes the restoration uh, I, I like that as difficult as it is it's marvelous when God can meet you before your trial and tell you that the trial is going to come I'm not going to change the date of the trial but I promise you that I am going to bring you out with a mighty hand <laughs> Woo. Uh, the, the problem uh, that we have to assess here is Israel's constant refusal to follow God and it speaks to me of the fact that oftentimes we can trace uh, the judgments, the chastening. We can chase our circumstances. I'm a little tired. My denunciation is a little weak, but I'll focus on it. Uh, we can trace what we go through oftentimes to our own behavior. I don't know if you ever want to admit that some of the things that you have to go through some of the things you have to fight has nothing to do with anything external it's expressed externally because of the tensions of the circumstance or the situation but actually those circumstances and situations would not be there if my relationship with God was intact Ah, yes, I don't know if you want to do it, so I'll put it on myself. You know, there are times when uh, things would be different if I were different in my relationship with God. It is not then simply that somebody else brought this on me. It is not that it could not have been avoided. There were certain things in my life that I look at and I discover that I made some decisions I shouldn't have made and I participated in certain behavior that I shouldn't have participated in and because of that there are certain things that are following me based on the things I initiated. Uh -huh. Sometimes the things that are behind me are the things that I started. And when you start certain things and some consequences begin to flow, uh, it doesn't make sense then to go pointing fingers on everybody. Uh, have you ever been blamed for what somebody else brought on themselves? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, in the same way, we many times blame people for what we bring on ourselves. If my relationship with God at that time was where it should be I would not be dealing with this stuff right now I'll give you a good example you know the, my back is hurting me today I've got vertebrae uh, out of whack in my neck two places and I remember how it happened uh, just the other day when I couldn't put my socks on and my back was hurt and I thought back to really what happened here did this just come upon me suddenly you know the devil put it on me or you know uh, rebuke in the name of Jesus and get out of my way well when I was in my 20s we had this car and my wife wanted to use the car to go somewhere and I said no I want to use the car because I want to go play some basketball and she said, well, you're being selfish. I said, well, for this time I will be. I got the guys waiting and I'm going to play ball. Surely I rise up to dunk a ball and somebody takes my legs out and I almost broke my neck and whipped my back. And because nothing was broken now, they didn't do anything. So now here, 30 years later, I'm suffering all right now I'm suffering now <laughs> it's a funny thing she didn't have to hit me she didn't have to holler at me she didn't have to do it I am now suffering the consequences of not being fair are you with me 
And it doesn't make sense for me to rebuke the devil and go on and do the crying and all that kind of stuff. I just need God to show me some grace in spite of my behavior. Now, many times in other incidents, we did not walk with God. And Isaiah had total frustration because five kings, uh, and he was during five kings, and all except Hezekiah had any real connection to God. It is even worse because Israel had a history and legacy of God's power. Anytime you have experience and have revelation of God and the power of God and you understand what he can do, you also understand what he requires. Many times what we want is what God will deliver to us, but we don't want his requirement. I love I love his blessings, I love his protection, I love the way he watches out for me and provides for me. But anybody who gives you all of his time in protection and in provision ought to be able to tell you how to live. Uh-huh, I'm not providing for none of my children. You ain't sitting up in my house, not in mine. And I provide everything you want. You eating the eggs and the bacon. And I can't tell you what time to come in. Now, that ain't going to happen. If you're in my house, you're going to come in the time I tell you to come in. Or I'm going to mess with some of the stuff that I give you. Uh, you won't sleep on dirty sheets. I'll have them washed for you and I'll make sure you get some food to eat. But all the other privileges, I'm going to cut out. Uh, you know, what we want is for God to bless us. And we want God to provide for us and to take care of us. But when he starts talking about how we ought to walk and how we ought to live, then here comes the protest. Ah, I feel it here. I'm talking to myself today. I'm preaching to me. It is critical because the history and legacy of God's power, the revelatory encounters were all throughout Israel's history. They met Jehovah Jireh in Abraham on the mount. They met Moses' Jehovah Nisi at Rephidim. They met Jehovah Rophika at Mara or Bitter Waters. They met David's shepherd, Jehovah Rea. The Lord is my shepherd. And of course, they knew Jeremiah's Jehovah Sikanu, my righteousness. They knew Ezekiel's Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. And so they had a history of experiencing the power of God. It's one thing to be evil when you don't know God. It's another thing to be evil when God is showing you his power every day. Uh, I wonder can you look over your life and document the times that if God did not step in you would have lost your way. Ooh, I feel it. I feel it. Just, just, just look at somebody and just tell them, I, I need to testify. That's all. I need to testify uh, of the goodness of the Lord, of the provision of the Lord, of the, uh, of the escapes he has made. Even when I got myself in a mess, he made a way for me to get out of the mess that I got myself in. If anybody ought to be praising the Lord, surely it ought to be those of us who have had history with the Lord our God. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody's praying for me. I'm feeling better already. It is true then that what Israel would do is because they did not want to walk the walk, God now had to punish and he had to chasten. And the reason he's chastening is simply because he wants a relationship with them. And they're avoiding the relationship. They want his provision, but they don't want to walk with him like they should. 
take care of me but we don't want to listen to you and so because they are now caught in a circumstance where God has withdrawn himself as a chastening event they are now trying to find relationships with other nations they have been and they were once under Pharaoh's great enslavement and uh, and God delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians and uh, Isaiah had told them previously in Chronicles uh, that Egypt is not where you need to go back you know you know you're in trouble when God delivers you out of something and you are trying to go back in what he just delivered you from you uh, I feel it here you know you're in trouble when you're going back to the woman God took out of your life and you're going back to the man when that God took out of your life you got to get nervous now when you start looking back to what God delivered you out of oh I'm gonna preach this thing here you know you're going back and so now Israel refuses to humble themselves before God's chastening and all God is saying to them is you brought this on yourself if you would just do right by me I would bless you like you've never been blessed but you're putting me through uh, this because I don't want to treat you like this uh, but the Jews were infatuated with Egypt and they are now getting ready to rely on the same Egypt that God delivered them from they should have realized that it doesn't make sense to go back to an Egyptian relationship when God uh, drowned all of Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea why would I leave better for less uh, uh, why would I walk out of somebody taking care of me to go sit somewhere with some devils uh, when uh, all I gotta do is just do what he says oh I could talk about that I need to bring that up around the table one night uh, if you got somebody taking care of you honey uh, you ought to at least try to do what they say it don't make sense walking out of a good beautiful nice house to go hang with somebody you got to buy his rent and and pay his way uh, and, and can't sit in a house and do what a good man is saying uh, uh, did you wake up I got your attention all right good uh, it's the same thing here God is providing and God has already delivered them from Egypt and they'd rather go back to the old boyfriend than to listen to what God has to say he says just humble yourself uh, it's not it's not the enemy that's doing it it's your pride that's doing it that's the reason you don't have anything because if you'd worship me like I want you ooh, and if you treat me like I want you to yeah uh, you ain't got no money to give me just give me honor and uh, you ain't got no money to give me but just give me praise <laughs> just give me worship uh, you ain't got no money to give me but if you treat each other right I'll open up the windows and pour you out blessings because if my people who are called by my name oh I feel it here uh, you got my name and and my name means something and if you just humble yourselves and pray he says then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land the reason you don't have what you should have is because you won't humble yourself and the reason you're making alliances with other folk when you know you're not doing me right is because you don't want to humble yourself uh, that's why he said walk before me and be holy uh, I got my eyes on you and uh, oh God I feel it can you imagine if you walk before him and you're holy if you walk before him then who is behind you you ain't got to worry about somebody having your back 
if you're walking before him and you're holy because he's walking behind you uh, I feel like having church just a little bit of church while I can uh, I'd hear from heaven and I will forgive because what's going on in the land has nothing to do with the independent of your relationship with me when your relationship is right with God you can point out your enemy enemies when your relationship is right with God you can talk to him with confidence when your relationship is right with God folk got to mind how they get in your place and get in your space but because he already said I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them that curse you you ain't got to bless nobody and you ain't got to curse nobody all you got to do is walk yeah. Ooh, I feel the power of the Spirit of God and so they decided that they would lean to the Egyptian and their power and so they chose now when God began to raise the Assyrians up and the Assyrians now becoming the whipping stick for God and there are times in your life when God has raised a whipping stick and what he wants to do with that stick is not cause you to make alliances with other people but what he wants you to do is just turn around and come back home to him the reason I'm causing you all this distress in the street is because I want you to come back home I want you to get your prayer life back uh, I want you to get your fasting back I, I want you to get your meditation back when you and I just used to talk it wasn't about you coming begging me for more money and you needing another house and a car it wasn't that uh, it was just you seeking me in the cool of the day and waking up early to talk to me because you wanted a relationship uh, I was on a show the other day I was on a Dorothy Spaulding show on some network and and the little baby came up about the third fourth generation and and the little baby just started Start raising hands to God I'm talking about little child just start raising hands because that's what the child saw that child doesn't know to ask God for anything but the child in its own in her own infancy is raising hands to God and I heard him say except ye become as a little child I don't need you to come to me with complications all the time and with situations but every now and then I need you to slip your hands up and just begin to adore me have you ever just walked around in your house and just began to adore the Lord because of his presence in your life but that's all he wanted from Israel but they wouldn't do it that's all he wants from us but there were times we just won't do it and so the Assyrian cavalry was very numerous extremely extremely efficient. And, and and history is replete with monuments and and history suggests that the Egyptians seem to be a good alliance because they were not with God when you're not with God you need a whole lot of folk to help you sometimes when you're not with God you're dealing with folk who have savory characters because you're not with God when you're with God you don't have to deal with savory character folk you can can just wait on the Lord wait on the Lord but they ain't got nothing but they can pray uh, they ain't got nothing but they know how to fast they ain't got nothing but they prayer warriors and I ain't got to have a whole lot of moneyed folk and be kissing uh, folk feet in order to move forward all I got to do is depend on the Lord that I serve and so now they are now going after a relationship with Egypt and Egypt had always had powerful war horses and they had chariots that they turn the war horses and put chariots with them in Ezekiel 14 and about verse 7 Diodorus assigns 27,000 to Pharaoh at one time and and it's exaggerated yet early in their history we know 
that Pharaoh in Egypt had 600 chariots because the Pharaoh of the Exodus was powerful. By Second Chronicles, we had Shishak and he had 1,200 chariots. Remember the Lord told you, don't you put no confidence in these horses and put none in these chariots. Yet Israel is courting a relationship with somebody that God delivered them from. Ah, uh, and by first Kings 10 and about 29, Pharaoh exported chariots to the neighboring nations and, and sent military strategists over there and to counter the oncoming Assyria. Ah, uh, but to trust Egypt is to mistrust God and to put pride in your own ability to handle yourself when what you're going through is God spanking you to come back home uh -huh. and when God begins to spank you can't nobody take it off you I got news for you when God drives you out of your house don't come to mine because I don't want that judgment following me I feel like preaching here when God begins to spank you don't you jump up in my arms talk about comfort me comfort me I tell folk all the time when you're fooling with folk that are half saved brothers and you got you one of them half saved sisters you ain't gonna get yourself in nothing but trouble because when God gets ready to call her back home and you get in the way talk about Lord, let us stay with me, Jesus. I guarantee you, he'll slap you out of the way, too. Uh, you don't need to fool with nobody half saved. And done fell in love with somebody half saved. And uh, buy him two and three cars. And uh, then they get ready to go back to Jesus. You're talking about, don't leave, baby. Don't leave, honey. When the Lord calls her back, I guarantee you, it's you she want but it's him she needs. Ah, uh, she going back home. I wish I could preach to some of these brothers up in here, some of you sisters. Uh, an interjection usually of lamentation because anytime you trust outside of God, there is such a thing as woe and when a woe comes it's 50 times in the prophets and, and it's a negative warning of threats of God's physical chastening and what's happening here is God does not want to chasten them like this but he is a jealous God and when you will not consult me and when you will not lay before me and when you will not seek my face I will stand back and let whatever comes comes come so I can get you to turn around I heard one writer say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and any times things start going wrong in your life you ought to have a little talk with Jesus now Lord open my eyes now and let me see is this me or is it something else because if it's something else it's gonna pass real fast but if it's me I have to turn in order to turn it and if you won't turn you're going to keep on getting whipped can I preach like I feel it the attitude however of the Lord is one of such where he says I will not contend forever neither will I always be angry and you have to ask now what is the change of attitude here because nothing can ever change God's attitude towards sin he hates sin with an eternal passion and any change would mean God is less God or sin is less sin it would stand to reason that the perpetrators should come under the same eternal castigation because if you sin and I'm talking to all of us in here whenever you sin we sin we bring judgment I feel like preaching in this house we cannot sin and judgment don't come if we sin and praise him that ain't gonna stop judgment we sin and read our Bible it ain't gonna stop no judgment because God will never be happy with sin. The psalmist declared God is angry with the wicked every day. 
and so now God is arm that's the Hebrew experiencing or expressing intense anger both of the state of being indignant and the activity given the expression not only is he indignation but he is the expression of the indignation and it's every day so whenever I do wrong I gotta be quick to confess and acknowledge before God so he don't chasten me because God did not give me this world to keep it from me because when he blesses me it blesses him I hope you're going with me here because it's going to twist at the end the state of being indignant the act given indignant expression means he allows the consequence and he cannot change his attitude towards sin yet the change of attitude is not toward sin but it is toward the sinner and what he wants to do now is use the circumstance of his indignation to turn the attitude of the sinner can I preach like I feel it I touch somebody and say what you're going through now is not to destroy you but it's to heighten your relationship with the Lord what you're facing now is not to wreck your life but indeed and in fact it's to better your life because God wants you to turn that person you chose who you shouldn't choose God's allowing it to wreck so you can get in your head this ain't where God wants me to be and once you get it in your head he's got to cause enough fire under you for you to have the ability to move away from something you already latch your heart up to I feel like preaching in here I feel like giving him some glory I feel the power of the Holy Ghost somebody's coming out today somebody's coming out and the attitude then of the sacrificial love of God toward the sinner is manifest in its fulfillment because the character is best expressed by the word grace I know you're in the wrong place but my grace is sufficient and I'm gonna allow this situation to beat you so that you come up out of it and say Lord touch my hand to thee I need you to pull me up out of this mess can I preach like I feel it everybody in here is in a situation somewhere in your life that you need God to pull you up out of that circumstance and so now he is saying I don't care what power you go to and I don't care who you make your alliance to until you come by me it ain't gonna change a thing until you come by me with a fresh praise until you come by me with a fresh desire until you start putting some things on the back burner and begin to talk to me about what I want in relationship with you I'm gonna hold some things out of your life I feel like preaching here he's talking to somebody is somebody in here he's talking to me and somebody else it might be just two of us but that's all right I'm talking to me I've got some things for you that I've got on the shelf and if you turn to me I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll give you what I've already desired to give you but it's time for you to turn to me because I've allowed this thing to whip you for a while but I'm getting sick and tired of the whipping that you're getting so I need you to hurry up and come on 
on home because I'm embarrassed now can I preach like I feel it when you look in the text you'll find out that I did not give you the stuff for somebody else to be fixing up your stuff and I didn't give you the promised land for somebody else to be in control of your life when you came to me and I opened up the doors for you I did not want some man controlling your destiny now, the only reason you got this man upset in your life is because you chose him over me when I set you up I set you up to bless you and I did not intend for you to choose some woman and leave my business unattended so now she's giving you all kind of blues and it ain't in finding another woman that'll solve it because I fixed it so you ain't gonna find nobody that's gonna solve this problem because I got the women whipping you so you can come on home to me and when you get back home to me I'll give you somebody that you couldn't find for yourself you decided you didn't want to praise me and serve me and you didn't want to lift me up like you should but I didn't give you the desires if I wasn't going to fulfill your desires but the only reason they're not being fulfilled is because you got to delight yourself in me and then I will give you the desires of your heart give somebody a high five and say let's go back to God it's a whole lot of stuff I feel like preaching in here I heard the prodigal son say why am I out here in this mess my father's servants are living better than I'm living I shall arise and go back to my father cut somebody say get up and let's go back let's go back to the old time prayer I feel like preaching here I was riding on the plane the other day and I said to myself Noel you study more than most people but you don't read for the relationship with God it's one thing to study in order to deliver high profile messages that shock the world but it's another thing to open the Bible for no other reason than for God to talk to your own spirit I feel like preaching in here he said every now and then I need you to get away from a busy schedule shut everybody out get rid of all them friends you got shut the phone off and lie before me so you and I can talk about you I feel the Holy Ghost and I can open up some things that I don't give you to share it's just what I want you to know about me can I preach like I feel it so you won't find peace in all that you do if you don't have a relationship with me he said I didn't bless you for somebody to monopolize your life and keep you from doing what I blessed you to enjoy I didn't bless you for the Assyrians to be running and the enemies of the Lord to be dominating his children so I'm getting sick and tired of other people pointing at the saints and saying they ain't got nothing they don't look like nothing and they don't live anywhere because you are my people and when I declare you're my people I want the other nations to know that if you mess with God's people I feel like preaching here he said I don't want Nebuchadnezzar putting up any high place and telling my children to bow I'm sick and tired of that I don't need Nebuchadnezzar causing my people to understand that 
Jehovah is not God but maybe Baal is God and I'm sick and tired of the nations putting their feet on you because you are called by my name and if you just turn your enemies who are trying to destroy you will have to back up I feel like preaching in here give somebody high five say you don't have to fight you just have to praise you don't have to fight you just have to worship you don't have to fight you just have to walk before him and be holy because holy will move the throne of God I feel the Holy Ghost in here he said I'm sick and tired of my children not being able to create a praise because they're always under the hand of the enemy so I'm gonna tell you what I'm getting ready to do if you'll just turn I know you've been shamed but I'm gonna give you double for your shame I feel like preaching in here shake somebody's hand say neighbor hurry up and turn and as soon as you turn build you a two car garage because your garage ain't big enough to do what God is getting ready to do he said I hurt you but I'm gonna fix it if you turn turn ah, don't turn to I feel the Holy Ghost give somebody high five say get ready for two get ready for two 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 houses get ready for two two cars get ready for two two closets get ready for two cuz as soon as we turn the window of heaven is getting ready to open get ready I feel like preaching I feel the Holy Ghost tired of being single turn tired of being by yourself turn tired of fooling with somebody that won't treat you right God told me to tell you turn if you turn I'll double your blessing if you turn I'll take you through your shame if you turn you look at me and say thank you for what I've been through because what I've been through has brought me a greater blessing turn and get ready for double double joy double peace double love double money double houses double vacations double jobs turn God said I'm sick and tired of you crying and I'm getting ready for you to praise me like ever before somebody touch your neighbor said two of everything I'm getting ready for two I'm getting ready for two too much more than enough God said time out for less than enough but time up for more than enough shake somebody's hand say double time it's double time time it's double time time it's double time time get ready for the double in your ah! Ah! Yeah! I feel it in here. I feel it in here. Shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off. Say double blessings, double joy, double peace, double, 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 double. Somebody holla double, holla double, double. I 
I feel the deliverance because of your shame. I'm gonna blot away your shame. And the folk gonna look at you and said, I thought, but look at me now. Shake somebody's hand. Say so they're looking at you funny, but that's gonna change. Cause God's getting ready to change your situation and double. that you miss it I'm not giving you a double for your righteousness right now <laughs> I'm going to give you a double because you've been shamed Woo. I keep telling you you ought to praise God for your enemies because they get you blessed you've been shamed double it up because you've been shamed and they've been pointing fingers at you talking about you and I let them do it because I wanted you to turn but because you've been shamed I'm gonna wipe your shame away by showing them how much God you do have oh you will I want you to stand alone and I declare I declare every pew every seat and altar right now I declare every place where we stand is an altar right now and I want you and I as we bow our heads before the Lord and declare our confessions to God we're standing at a pivotal point in our lives 
for God has sent a word. Turn. You, backsliding does not mean leaving the church. Because you can backslide and be in the church. And backslide is not as mean a word as you take it to mean because it does not mean you're without God. But what it means is you've gone backward in your relationship instead of forward. That doesn't have to mean a big step. For those of you who are leading to self-righteousness, even that is backsliding. Every one of us in here have stopped or slowed down on something in our lives. Even some things in our lives we would freely give to God. Now we struggle with giving it to Him. And I believe right now if there is whole scale corporate confession that things will change immediately. Why? Because God's been waiting for the turn. He ain't gonna go get it after your turn. He's been standing by you with it all the time. And he says for a season I could not declare who I am in your life. And that caused you shame. But I'm going to give you a double right now. Father, as I stand here, and we stand together in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood, we say sorry now. We confess and acknowledge that we haven't spent the time with you that we should. We have incorporated things in our lives that we shouldn't. And we have stopped doing things that we should. Forgive us right now, this instant. Forgive us. Cause us to turn our face back to you. Cause us to forget the alliances, the allegiances. And cause us to stand firm upon your word. Things that you had given us victory over. Give us victory over them again. Things that never controlled us, don't let them control us now. Things that would destroy us, give us the power to walk through and declare I belong to God. And we receive your forgiveness right now. And we open up to you, Lord, our whole heart and say lead us and guide us as you will. And I claim it right now. I claim it right now. Somebody throw your hands up and say, thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for forgiveness. Uh, give him a praise for his forgiveness. If you trust and believe him right now. There's a man, there's a woman in this building that needs to come to God. Now is the time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the altar call. My brother, my sister. Yes, that's it. Somebody will walk with you. Don't let anyone walk alone. Come on. Come on. Come on. You don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to lose your way. The Lord is calling you to salvation. Bring the whole family. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, clap your hands, church. Give God the praise. Come on, I hear the Lord calling. Come on. 